So somebody was asking me in the morning, how do you feel like to be a chief guest in such an August gathering? So I said that, uh, I mean, how can one feel to be a chief guest amongst one's own family and fraternity? So, I mean, I'm truly humbled, I must say. Thank you so much, uh, uh, President Ipta uh, Sanjay, Sanjay Singh Ji. Uh, Mr. Sanjay Singh, President Ipta, all the past presidents of Ipta present here in this uh, uh, special seminar. Our program chair, Raghavendra, uh, our vice president, Ipta, Ganesh Bhatti, keynote speaker for this, for this very special session, Dr. Ashok Kumar, Secretary General Goel Saab, and the special, special people who are attending this, uh, this Ipta seminar today, our, our honorable awardees, BM Khanna uncle, uh, Anil Kumar ji, and uh, one person I have never met, but I, I, I really admire him quite a lot from the depth of my heart, Mr. Ibrahim, who will be getting this absentia. So friends, I was asking uh, Sanjay ji, ki, what should I speak? So he said that, Pawan, speak with your own experience about your own industry. So friends, I would like to take a few minutes I have been allotted 15 minutes and 2 minutes have gone into my introduction. So in the balance 13 minutes, I would like to take you to the journey of Nanny in the past one decade or so. Though we started 25 years ago, but we were in a sort of slumber in the first one and a half decades. And then suddenly that slumber went off and, we, and, that, and I call it the Nanny Awakening that took place around 2010. So friends, uh, there is a clear-cut differentiation in the sizes of the paper mills in the country. And we have been very fond of saying A-grade mills and B-grade mills and C-grade mills and, and that many a times doesn't, doesn't look good to our ears. You know, C-grade mills. But then, that's how it has been. So friends, we were, we were considered to be B-grade mills. Uh, only, purely from the fact of, from the point of view of uh, the size, number one. And number two, the raw material we were using, agricultural residue, bagasse and wheat straw. So we had our own set of problems. And the number one of them, the prime problem which we had at that point of time was how to control the pollution, the water pollution. That was the biggest problem. And uh, fortunately, I had a good friend at that time, Mr. Anil Kumar. I went to him. I saw his uh, uh, recovery boiler that low temperature incinerator. We don't call it a boiler, it is an incinerator. And uh, that was doing a wonderful job and we copied it. And we put it up and then that particular problem was resolved for the time being, especially for the black liquor. And that was the time when we really started to grow. Because we had taken care of one of the biggest problems that is of water pollution. So friends, any mill today in 2022 wants to grow in a sustainable manner at least for next 15-20 years has to truly take care of its uh, effluent being discharged from its mill. There is no substitute to it. There is no alternate to it. There, is, there cannot be any eyewash. So that is, that is point number one. And once having said that thing right, we thought that uh, let us deal with other set of problems. And what was the other set of problems for agro-based mills in those times? was the quality of paper was up to a certain level okay but not really as good as a wood based paper on certain aspects. Our brightness was okay, the cleanliness of sheet was okay but the printing results were not good. The customer was, was not happy with the bulk of the paper. So then we put our minds together and 2010 or 2009 we started searching for a technology which could, which could take care of all these issues. So again, a very good friend of mine, Ashraf Bhai is here. They can recall it. We had a few meetings and then subsequently we found out a, a company in Europe who could supply us a shoe press, not really the shoe press we know of today, a smart shoe press, a mini shoe press. And, and um, 
a film size press, a metering size press. So we were thinking of a pawn type size press and Ashar Bhai told me, look Pawanji, he, 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 he's, he's, a, he's a wonderful person. He says, well, whenever he has to, you know, put across his point, he does it in a way that it, it, it goes to your heart rather than mind. So he said that, Pawanji, a pawn type size press, again, you will be stuck up with your production limitations. You cannot speed up the machine. So let us think of metering size press. So in 2011, we installed a, a shoe press, a mini shoe press and a metering size press. And friends, that was the turn around point uh, for our mill. We started uh, producing good quality of paper, unacceptable quality of paper, and that is when we realized that we can really compete with, uh, with, the, with the paper being manufactured from wood to a certain level. Again, the problem of opacity, opacity was still there. You know, agricultural residue has its own limitations. That fiber has its own weaknesses, if I can use that word. So in terms of its strength, you can take care of by adding soft wood pulp. But what about the other, other limitations? So we started thinking of putting up a precipitated calcium carbonate plant. And again, there were a few standard norms in the industry, but we went beyond those norms and we put up a, a plant with a, with a company called Pacific Nano Products, which had a, uh, you know, a, a different kind of technology. It was a pressurized reactor and all those things, and we, we really got some good results. So that problem was also taken care of. Now problems, we, uh, friends, we have two machines. So this I'm talking about uh, uh, whatever we did was on PM2, which was a first floor machine running at uh, uh, 700 meters at that time. And we always dreamt of running that machine at 750 meters per minute. And today we have crossed 800 meters per minute uh, with all those, all those technologies which we have in hand. <laughs> subsequently, subsequently, we put up a tough former on the machine. We changed the calendar of the machine. We put up a synchro fly sheeter, which was a dream at that point of time. People were using normal, normal sheeters like duplex cutters and all those sheeters. So, so finally, we could embellish the machine with the desired equipment, and it was it was uh, it was not something uh, which we did uh, uh, randomly. Lot of thought went to it, lot of exercise went to it, and today that machine has become a sort of showroom, a multi-brand showroom, right from you name Foyt, you name Walmart, you name Andrews, and you name PMT or Balmer. So so. Uh, all these companies have put their hands on this machine and this machine uh, is, uh, is uh, running to our satisfaction. Now coming to the second part friends, six minutes. Coming to the second part, that is more interesting. I believe that we start preparing for any crisis in advance. So this crisis happened, COVID-19, it was a big crisis. And fortunately, we had started preparing for it without knowing that we are going to have this crisis. And how? In 2014, friends, the other mill, other, other machine, which is called PM1, it's a ground floor machine, no basement, 3 meter tackle, running at 125 meter per minute to start with. Subsequently, it had a few rebuilds and it was running at 250-300 meters. Later on in 2008-2009, it was running at 400 meters per minute, having, having a closed drop press section. And then in 2014, after having done all the rebuilds of PM2 and gaining all the relevant experience, we thought, let us rebuild this machine also. And when we started discussing about the rebuild with various suppliers, we found that it was really a challenging task. So friends, after the rebuild of the machine, we have, we have a, a hydraulic head box on that machine with dilution profiling, whatever Dr. Ashok Kumar just mentioned. We have all those features in the head box. And then there was no space to put up a top former. So we, we had, we put up a high speed a dandy roll from, from, from Kufra, Germany. Uh, so as to get the desired formation, we did relevant changes, necessary changes in the wire part. Close row of the press section with a shoe press on ground floor. So friends, subsequently, and then having a film press also on the ground floor. So friend that, friends, that machine has the first hydraulic head box with dilution profiling on a ground floor machine without basement in the world. That machine has got the first shoe press on a ground floor machine in the world. That machine has got the first film size press 
on a ground floor machine without basement in the world. So these are the few things which we have on that machine, we did on that machine for the first time. And friends, with that kind of investment, in 2014, the investment was around 75 crores. And my dad asked me, what is going to be the return on investment? How, how many years are you going to get the payback? And Vitaji, to my surprise and to my uh, dad's discomfort, that was coming seven years. Seven years was the payback time, but I was happy that at least I would be able to improve the quality of the paper, I would be able to produce more, and that's how, I mean, if seven years uh, payback is there, it's fine. At least you would be able to sell paper comfortably. That was the idea. And friends, believe me when I say that technology never lets you down. It never lets you down, and so was the case with us. We got the payback in less than two years, to our utter surprise. In less than two years, we got the payback. Yeah. So friends, that was, a, that was a year 2014-15, and then, वो कहते हैं ना कि अगर आप अगर आप कुछ इस तरह का काम करो तो फिर उसका नशा हो जाता है। So then we got we got that that feeling that no okay then we can do something more and that something more was the time when industry was going for you know distilleries ethanol plants. So all sugar mills were going for putting up you know distillery plants and 200 distilleries were coming in Uttarakhand and UP and all those sugar mills who were supplying us bagasse they started putting up their own distilleries. So where to get this bagasse from? It became a big issue. So 2017, uh, 2018, we decided to put up uh, uh, our own fiber line, hardwood fiber line. And when we said that we want to put up 150 tons hardwood fiber line, it was no, no from everybody. Here 150 tons, such a short capacity, such a small capacity, we cannot supply you. And then friends, uh, finally, we put up a 300 tons capacity hardwood fiber line. It is the state of the art with all twin roll presses, uh, you name the latest technology, it is there. The cooking area, the, the, the washing area, the bleaching area, the screening, the chipper, everything is a state of the art, along with along with uh, uh, recovery boiler, a new recovery island, and that too state of the art. Somebody mentioned about HERB, high efficiency recovery boiler. Dr. Ashok Kumar mentioned about the, uh, the solids, the steam button of solids. So we are getting close to 2.5 ton steam button of solids. Again, it was not heard of at that point of time. So, uh, Corona uh, delayed the whole project by almost a year, slightly more than that. But subsequently, we were able to commission it in October 2022, uh, 2021. So, it's running uh, fine now and we are getting some wonderful results. And today, uh, the quality of a paper has totally transformed, if I can use that word. It is totally transformed and we are exporting close to 22% of our total production of PM2 uh, to, to various countries and uh, uh, so what happened I use, a, I use a phrase that you start preparing for a crisis in advance so with this rebuild of PM1 we had in fact prepared for COVID-19 which we never knew it is going to come so when 2020 when COVID came and Dr. Ashok Kumar mentioned in one of his slides that writing, printing, paper mills were the worst affected. And we were also the worst affected for one month. And after that one month, we started producing two products. One was a hygiene product called Cup Stock on that PM1. And the second was uh, uh, absorbent craft, saturating craft also it is known as. And we used to make saturating craft, absorbent craft around 10 years ago. But then we started making from, from bagasse. And, and we were able to match the quality of absorbent craft being produced from wood because of the simple fact that we had a good machine. The formation of the paper was excellent. So friends, today that machine is running 100% on uh, uh, these two industrial grades, uh, cup stock and absorbent craft. And fortunately, we have to deal with the market vagaries only for, only for PM2. But today market is good, so, so we can relax now. But friends, Good times are not always there to remain so. Bad times are always there uh, in between. So we have to prepare our whole technology, our whole mill for those bad times. My time is up, but I'll just take half a minute. Because again, a very important point, a very important topic, very close to my heart, that is environment. 
somebody mentioned that zero liquid discharge is not possible it is it is uh, uh, not commercially viable not technically technically feasible but here in this hall in this august gathering i would like to mention one thing any man who is extracting water from ground beware beware of your impending impending threat you're not going to be allowed to do so i would say 5 years down the line at the max 10 years down the line start preparing for for your recycling activities is start is start searching for the technology where you can recycle more and more of your effluent and friends membrane technology is one such technology we are scared of it because of high cost high capex high opex but please mind it with certain tweaking we can we can put it to good use we are doing it nanny we have we are after 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 taking it out from ro the reject handling we are doing with mechanical vapor recompression technology it is a wonderful technology it consumes one fourth less energy than than subsequent ro second stage or third stage ro's and we are very close to achieving our targets and the cost today is you must be interested in the cost and we would be presenting a paper maybe next ipta uh, would be around 60 meter cube 60 rupees per meter cube we are expecting it to bring it down to 40 to 45 rupees per meter cube so we can we can use a good mix of various technologies i'm not saying put all the ro's for for 10 mld ro or 8 mld ro or 6 mld ro i'm saying you can mix uh, use uh, this ro technology to a great use uh, so as to reduce your ground water uh, extraction and consumption kashipur has come into a critical water zone from semi critical and before that it was in safe water zone so friends lot of responsibility lies on our shoulders our posterity is not going to forgive us for whatever we are doing today so we have to be very careful about that so with all that uh, i can remember we are we are meeting in delhi uh, i have exceeded my time just one couplet i remember in hindi uh, from a famous kavi uh, ashok chakravarti who lives in noida so he says jo mehnat kari jo mehnat kari tera pesha rahega na resham sahi तेरा रेशा रहेगा अभी कर ले पूरे सभी काम अपने तू क्या सोचता है हमेशा रहेगा सो फ्रेंड्स विद दैट आई वुड लाइक टू आई वुड लाइक टू एक्सटेंड माय हार्ट फेल्ड थैंक्स टू टू माय टू माय फैमिली ऑफ इफ्टा स्पेशली संजय सिंह जी एंड गोयल साहब फॉर फॉर गिविंग मी दिस अपॉर्चुनिटी टू टू स्पीक माय हार्ट टू यू टू इंटरेक्ट विद ऑल ऑफ यू एंड आई आई होप आई आई वुड लाइक टू रिकॉल Uh, uh, one statement made by Anil Ji jokingly many a times at IPTA, and he has said that when I once attended IPTA, uh, that uh, we always say as a paper industry, ki kharaab halat chal rahe hai, present badiya nahi chal raha, lekin future is good. So I know the future of paper industry is always good, always bright, and so many bright minds over here.